discussion about community agreements, which will be introduced during our March 13th celebration of leadership event. We're going to discuss what prompted the development of the community agreements and what members can expect to see. So let's get started. The I understand that discussions about community agreements actually started during your tenure as the DEI committee chair. Tell us what a community agreement is and why you support its development yeah, so a community agreement is all about uh, how we show up uh, in meeting spaces and community events uh, and show the uh, respect to each other and hold the space to make a, a safe, welcoming, inclusive environment that uh, creates the culture of belonging that we want uh, as we convene community events. Um, it's all about how we show up for each other. and. Um, the development of them goes back a little ways, you know. Over the past decade or so, I have been attending lots of events out in the Boulder community, uh, and chamber events included. And oftentimes, uh, you might have incidents as we convene a lot of uh, diverse people in one space. Um, people are showing up in different ways, and sometimes uh, you might have a microaggression, you might have an incident. Uh, and as a trusted base uh, on these issues in the community, oftentimes people would come and tell me and say, hey, I, I just wanted someone to know that this happened. Um, or they might ask me, hey, what can we do about this? And, and I found that oftentimes uh, there just wasn't good systems in place to address issues as they come up uh, and to really help live up to these values uh, in community spaces. So flash to 2021, um, I'm now on the board, I'm chairing the DEI committee, and as we come out of the pandemic, uh, I'm having lots of community events, and people haven't socialized face-to-face uh, -face in a long time. And though everybody wants to show up as, as the best selves, uh, you can see people stumbling a bit. Uh, additionally, uh, you have the protests happening in the summer of 2020, and equity and inclusion um, and, and showing up for each other really heightened, uh, heightened concern. And so I thought this was a good time to address these issues. Uh, and so bring forward the community agreements to the DEI committee uh, and to uh, you know, the chamber staff uh, in proposing this uh, was something that happened then. And that's when we began developing it. Okay. So Jacqueline, who was involved with the development of the community agreement? And what were the expectations? Well, when I came on board, they had already started the DEI committee and the board had already determined this is where we were going forward. So we had, we had a great team at that point. So we had you know, Carly Hare, John Tayer, and of course Nikhil was all part of that. So we, we started, I started from there and then we jumped into the research and getting some legal advice of how we wanted to shape and the wording that went into it. And really the intent is really to just level up what we're doing at events, just to make sure we all know how we're showing up in community and being respectful and, and enjoying that space together. And so, Anne, from the DEI community's perspective, uh, what are the ideal outcomes that you can see from introducing the community agreements um, at the chamber events? Um, that the chamber, that we continue to have um, great involvement from the community at chamber events, that it's a place where everybody feels safe, where everybody feels trustful, where everybody wants to have the best conversations that we can possibly have. And um, and we also would love it if people took this concept and took it back to their work environments and did the same things there. So we Chamber wants to be a leader in all things. And this is one of the ones that we 
we'd like to continue being a leader in, and that is a place where everybody feels safe, welcome, wanted, and trusted. So let's talk about the process. Jacqueline, as I understand it correctly, as of March 13th, anyone attending a chamber event who feels that they've been offended in any way now has the ability to do something about it. Tell us how incidents are to be reported. Sure, I, hopefully we made it easy enough. So if you go on our website, the community agreements is laid out, and there's a QR code that has an incident report. So you can mail it in if you want it to be anonymous. You can email it in. And that way, we get, we get all the information. And on that report, you might want to include things like what exactly happened, who was around, so that we can see, you know, kind of fall into what was happening at the time to determine what maybe an outcome should be. And then at the end of the year, the goal is to have a, a transparency report that we'll be presenting just the things that we've been dealing with. So, so Nikhil, uh, as I understand it, you're the inspiration behind the introduction of the community um, agreement. What's it feel like to see it finally being delivered and introduced at the celebration of leadership? Uh, it feels exciting uh, and just satisfying uh, you know, to see, uh, I've been involved in many uh, projects focused on uh, inclusivity and uh, diversity, but to see this one uh, you know, coming to fruition, going back a full decade now, uh, and just how it all unfolded to the point of at that time, children the DEI committee, uh, bringing it forth, but having the support of the team of uh, folks like Jacqueline and uh, and John, uh, and just uh, you know, it, it feels great to know that uh, we have something that can make an impact in the community and make an impact on the Cheney community and the broader community that we invite into these events um, and really live up to the values that uh, I think we as a community uh, want to have, and I think. People show up uh, with the best of intentions, uh, but intention doesn't always equal impact. Sometimes an incident may happen, um, and now uh, we have a way that those can be addressed. But also, uh, you know, it's it's going to build trust among people. We have opportunities for, uh, for growth and education, uh, and really, ideally, sometimes I think we're all busy in life, and we come to events and. We have busy days, but maybe just looking at these community meetings will remind people of uh, how they want to show up and that they, we all want to be our best selves uh, and with each other. Uh, and hopefully we'll result in no incidents happening and uh, people having a good time at events and just uh, being able to, uh, to be with each other in, a, in an inclusive and safe environment. So Jacqueline, you get the final question. What type of reporting can members expect to see and when will they see it? Got it. Well, I, I think the reports could be, you know, varied. So you might have a speaker who was speaking and said something that was offensive to somebody in the audience and they just want that addressed. You might have a personal conversation that somebody just what they didn't settle right with them. And maybe a week later they decide, I'd just like the chamber to know about this, that this happened. And nothing comes up, but they just want you to know that it happened. And so again, we would, what we would do is we're, we would get those reports and at the end of the year again, do the um, uh, transparency report of just the areas and the things that we dealt with over the year. So, Anne, Jacqueline, Nikhil, thank you so very much for your time today. We appreciate your thoughts and insights. So once again, the community agreements will be introduced during the celebration of leadership that will be happening on March the 13th. Thank you very much. <laughs>